Today, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. We're gonna talk about the most powerful thing in college football 25 on the offensive side of the ball. No, it's not the run game. No, it's not a spin move or a juke move. No, it's not RPOs. No, it's not a speed option or triple option pitch. We are gonna be throwing streaks. It's about time. Now, streaks are usually viewed as something that is simply a pull route or a blown coverage only throw for most players. I'm gonna show you guys how to turn these into weapons for you that you can use or catch on man or zone coverage on the outside or in the slot to the tight end or hell, even the running back if you want to. This is a tactic that I think if you guys can learn, you guys will be able to run any offense, freestyle within that offense, run any types of RPOs or run plays underneath of your street game and score points at will. We are using the placement and accuracy passing type. No, we are not using revamp passing. The reason I do not like revamp passing is that you can't see the reticle and where it's being steered. This is very important because we're going to be moving the reticle or the location that we're throwing the ball and i want this to be on now the pass lead increase this is something that most players in fact pro madden players that are playing college football right now are using small this makes it so you can throw the ball relative to the receiver it only allows you to move the ball a small distance away from the receiver we are going to be on medium because i don't want to oversteer my pass leads but i want a little bit more distance than what they allow you to throw the ball away from the receiver on small you probably have seen some pro players doing this on small and i'm gonna tell you right now that the reason that's not nearly as effective on this is because the two main interactions you have to be absolutely perfect on small or else it doesn't really work on medium there's going to be a much larger margin for error and in fact if you screw it up and there's an inaccurate throw it oftentimes benefits you by putting the ball in an even better spot where only the receiver can get to it so that is a huge benefit of using this mechanic now with reticle speed we're going to be on 10. i used to be on 15 with this but i think 10 is going to be better because i found myself when i didn't want a jet pack but i wanted to free form throwing the ball a little bit too far due to the reticle being fast i find that 10 is a sweet spot it allows me to kind of put the ball exactly where i want to on jet pack and rocket catches but also not be so squirrely and fast that i can't lead a post route over the middle of the field so this is my settings for placement and accuracy now let's get to work this is how this is going to behave we are going to be putting our receivers on streaks or fades now depending on where you are on the field if you were to take a look at the x receiver his hot routes only allow for him to have a streak that's left stick up if the b receiver is hot routed left stick up it gives a fade that is okay both these routes basically are the same for the purpose of this and we're going to be using the same freeform pass lead now before i show you the pass lead make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the zan madden youtube channel i'm breaking down content to help you get better at college football 25 but madden is right around the corner you guys can take advantage of my madden 25 pre-sale on my strategy website gridirongameplans.gg i also have college football memberships on the website weekly vault updates all offensive and defensive game plans members only discord access you guys can bundle madden with college football you guys can go just madden you can go just college football i've got content on the website so if you enjoy this channel and you want even more that's where my best stuff is it often lives on the website well before it ever sees the light of day here on the youtube channel this particular tip is actually something that i broke down initially at the start but i want to share it with you guys just to kind of help you move the ball a little bit more effectively so here's how we're going to do this to freeform we are going to hold the left trigger now i'm going to throw a bad football because i know some of you have not freeform before but to freeform you're going to press the left trigger and the icon of the receiver and then it allows you to steer the ball wherever you want now you see right there i just intentionally steered this kind of left and right and over through it but this allows you to get exact placement of the football where you want now for the purpose of this we're actually going to be throwing this to the back shoulder of the receiver so the key with this is regardless of man or zone in this case we're facing a cover three match you are going to freeform this basically down and if there's a slight component to the inside or outside i would lean towards outside being the back shoulder basically with this i just snap the ball man or zone once the db's hips are turned i throw this down outside and i'm going to click on and turn around on a dime now this is where it's important to designate the difference between small and medium as it pertains our ability to pass lead this so i'm going to leave up this little camera instant replay menu here because it's the only way you can see my click on you see right here that i'm basically running this streak and as soon as this player's hips are turned i am allowed to throw the streak to my receiver because i'm going to be able to click on and take advantage this db's back is to the quarterback now because there's an underneath purple zone chilling i don't want to throw it right away so i'm going to let this travel a little bit 
So you see right here, at this point, I start my free form and I'm throwing this down and outside. If you were to think of the thumbstick as a clock with straight ahead being 12 o'clock and straight behind being six o'clock, I'm throwing this to where the hour hand would be at seven o'clock. So with this, we're throwing a seven to number seven. And this ball comes out. So we'll go ahead and show you here. As soon as I get this out, I immediately press B or circle on PlayStation to switch to my receiver. And while I'm doing this, my thumb is still held down into the outside. So that way, as soon as I get control, my guy turns immediately around on axis and is able to jump up and get this animation. This animation right here is what we call the rocket catch. The rocket catch animation is one in which a wide receiver jumps straight up and comes straight down in the spot that their feet are when they took off. This prevents the ability for a DB to get back into the play, make a hit on your receiver as he's drifting or fading towards him, and it disengages from the two-man interaction. Look at how the man coverage on this is a good seven to eight yards away from my player as he turn, turns around to make this catch. Now, here's the best part about this. You do not have to have insane height to rip this off. In fact, I would actually encourage that your receivers be six foot, six foot one. I tend to notice that when you get super tall, I'm talking six foot five plus, those players tend to over animate, meaning that you can actually stop, turn around on a dime from further underneath of the ball placement, which is great. But because they're in the air so long, a lot of times that DB can hit them from behind and make them drop the ball. So I actually find that the sweet spot on this is going to be like five foot 11, six foot, six foot one, maybe six foot two. And the thing that is really, truly great is the change of direction in agility. The higher these ratings are, the better the player can be controlled to turn around on a dime and not feel so clunky. So you're gonna find that really the sweet spot is probably a six foot, six foot one player with as high a cod and agility as you can get. So what I'm gonna do right here, let's go against a little man to man. Now I've got this blitz set up. We're not too worried about this here. I'm gonna throw this to this very short receiver on the outside. Now to the wide side of the field, I tend to lean more towards throwing the ball, definitely back shoulder. So if we were to think about this as a clock again, you wanna make sure that this is super down and outside. I would say maybe four o'clock to make sure that this ball is really staying away from the DB. So again, we snap this football and I'm gonna throw this down and outside to four o'clock, holding my pass lead. And you see right there that I was able to turn around on a dime. Now, here's where I wanna get into, sometimes being too short hurts you a lot on this because he's actually five foot seven. So this is doable with a very short receiver. But again, you wanna be tall enough that you can actually run away from the catch point. So that way you're not super tight to the DB, but it is possible. So again, I'm gonna leave this little camera menu up so you can see me click on you see the fade he gets into the vertical component now the db's hips are turned i'm allowed to throw the football at this point so you see in the background i'm starting my throwing animation with the quarterback this is a four o'clock pass lead as soon as i can i press b or circle depending on your console to click on and i'm still holding my thumb the same way that i was holding the pass lead that way my player turns around and snaps immediately into it a position where he can rocket catch now this is where i'm saying that the height matters because a five foot seven guy cannot really run away from the catch point of the football. A six foot guy might be able to run, you know, back maybe to right here or even right here and still be able to jump up and high point this ball in front of the DB. So in this example, this five foot seven guy kind of hurts us in this regard. But let me go ahead and swap those receivers. I'm gonna put my other receiver on the other side of the field here. And you're gonna see the exact same throw against the exact same man-to-man -man coverage. So I'm gonna put that six foot one receiver on that route, make sure that he's the only guy running that route. We'll go ahead and get everyone else out of the way because it's isolated man to man. And you're gonna see the difference right away because I can throw this ball and turn around from further underneath the catch point. I'm another yard or two closer. And actually that ball was pretty tight as well. So again here, you see that I'm able to throw this ball down and outside, hold the pass lead, click on, turn around and jump in place. Now here's the part that you guys may wish to tweet. Remember how I said that small doesn't allow you to steer the reticles far away from the receiver? Reticle speed also matters here. So if you wanted to tick this up two or three points, these two or three points allow the speed of the reticle to move further and faster. So your quarterback's throwing animation is only so many frames long. So if you want this to you know be able to be steered away from that player further, Turn your speed up. Again, it does come at the risk being that maybe just maybe you will oversteer on other routes. So what you're gonna see here is that when I throw this ball, 
I could actually throw this ball further underneath this receiver, which allows me to turn around and attack the football better and avoid that catch animation where they hit me from behind. So if you guys think 10 is too low, you're getting hit from behind too often, maybe tick it up to 12, 13. And if you really, really, really wanna go crazy with this, 15 is awesome as well. But I think 10 is a good starting point for you guys. Now, again, this pass lead is basically left or right. I mean, if it's a left side streak, it's down and left. If it's a right side streak, it's down and right. Let me show you what this looks like to a slot receiver. So in this particular context, I'm gonna put right bumper on a streak. This is our short receiver again. And I'm gonna go ahead here and we'll just use a deep out route to B. I've got a little bit of a match coverage here. So I wanna make sure that I'm isolated with our slot receiver right bumper. So here we go. I'm gonna basically throw this down and outside shoulder, click on, and you see right there, I'm able to catch this in between two zones. Basically putting it on the back hip or the back shoulder of the receiver, immediately clicking on and turning around and making this catch. Again, you see right here, this is match coverage now. We've been working versus, you know, a little cover three, a little bit of man. Now here's some cover four match. X receiver, down and outside ball. Same pass lead as we click on, keep your stick held down, turn around on a dime and tap A for a conservative catch or Y to jump up in front of the DB. In these cases, I'm a big fan of just pressing Y. You only need to get one foot down in college. In Madden, this might be a situation where you guys need a conservative catch. Keep in mind that when you conservative catch, the receiver doesn't really jump away from the DB. So there's a chance that if it's tight, he might get hit from behind. Albeit, it does come with the opportunity to be able to hold on to the ball in traffic a little bit better because A catches or X on PlayStation for conservative gives a catch in traffic bonus to the receiver. The other thing to remember too is that the game loves to reward user click click-ons. So when you're going against an AI player, if your opponent doesn't click on to their DB, they're probably one, not going to get a great animation towards the wide receiver. And two, even if they do, it might still reward you with a catch anyways. And then on top of that, if you're making your opponent click on, this is probably not something that they're very comfortable defending. They might whiff, they might completely screw up. They might press Y and play a catch animation and fall down behind your receiver. You'll catch it, turn around and run up the field for a touchdown. So this is something that you guys can apply into any offense, literally any offense. I mean, imagine this in the flex bone, which by the way, you can get my flex bone offense on gridiron game plans. Imagine this in bunch to that solo receiver. Everyone likes to run bunch, but everyone runs off the coverage with the solo receiver. Now you can throw streaks to them. The possibilities are endless with this. Make sure you guys are applying this into your offense. This is something I do in every offense that I run. It's a weapon, not just a blown coverage or a pull route. Now it's a primary route. And that's a big deal for everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Check out Gridiron Game Plans. Best place to get better at Madden and college football. And I'll see you guys this afternoon with a YouTube short or tomorrow with another long form video upload. Until then, this is Zan. Get the lab and good luck.